On the catwalks of the world, eco-friendly fashion is all the rage, as celebrities lead a trend in clothing that could help save the planet. Organic cotton garments and shoes from recycled material, along with eco-vehicles, are all part of the new green lifestyle. But is this just a niche market for the wealthy and the environmentally conscious, or can green fashion become more than a passing fad? This week, Earth Report investigates eco-clothes. Is green the new black? Much of the clothing we wear is made of cotton. Most cotton farmers use polluting chemicals. Cotton farms take up just 2.5% of the world's farmland, but use 10% of all pesticides and 22% of all insecticides produced annually, according to the British government. This can have an impact on people's health. According to the World Health Organization, 20,000 people die every year from pesticide poisoning. But here in Gujarat in northwest India, some farmers are turning away from chemicals and switching to organic cotton production. According to the Gujarati government, 5,000 of the more than 100,000 cotton farmers here are now growing organic cotton. In part, they switch because of health concerns, but they also get a guaranteed minimum price for their cotton when prices are down. Kima Sorda and his family of six run a small five-hectare farm near the town of Rapar in the district of Kutch. Five years ago, he stopped using chemicals on his land. Five years ago, we farmed using chemicals, and in that time, we had input costs for chemical pesticides, and also we were not getting a good enough price. Now we're getting great benefit from organic farming. Modern organic farming is a combination of traditional and new methods. Instead of synthetic chemicals, Kima uses his own natural insecticide, with pods from the Akdu cactus, which are beaten into a milky pulp. Then combined with leaves from the Nima tree, cow's urine and buttermilk. All is left to ferment for a couple of weeks and then spread over the crops. In tandem with this, Kima uses modern pheromone traps to catch bugs. The absence of chemicals attracts natural predators like birds. Here you can tell an organic field by the sound. It's alive with birdsong. Instead of fertilizers, farmers use plenty of manure. In this area of Kutch, there are more livestock than people. Trained in modern composting techniques, the muck spreading is more efficient and effective. It takes three years of farming without chemicals before a farm is declared organic. AgroCell, a commercial company, provides training, advice, marketing, distribution and reinvestment for over 4,000 cotton farmers here in Gujarat, as well as 45,000 small farmers throughout India. The company helps farmers through the transition to organic, guaranteeing a minimum fair price for the cotton. They add a fair trade premium of two rupees for every kilo produced to help fund community projects like better water supplies. For the farmers, water is their most precious resource and this newly dug reservoir supports the surrounding farms and three villages. There's also now a clean water supply, a library for the local school and solar street lighting. Farmers are getting assurance that they will get minimum fat rate support price before sowing their crop. And at the end, whatever they are selling, they are getting fat rate premium. And that premium will take care for 
overall development of entire society right from the environmental education health and overall development of the society the question is what are the advantages to the farmer of moving to organic production the yields from organic cotton farming match those of conventional cotton production when harvests are good according to a recent study in leaner times organic farmers tend to produce more at first, the input costs to organic farmers are comparable to non-organic cotton, though they drop over time. Prices too are similar, although organic farmers are guaranteed a minimum of 21 rupees per hectare, even if cotton market prices drop to as little as 18 rupees per hectare. And we recruit more and more farmers. Continuously, you can say average, we can maintain our 40% growth every year. And last few years, I can say it is more than 100% growth in organic as well as fat rate farming. And uh, future, I can say, uh, big retailers and very small entrepreneurs, both are very much interested. And business is, I can say, sky is the limit. One of AgroCell's long-running clients is People Tree. It's been pioneering ecological and fair trade fashion for more than 10 years. Every stage of its supply chain has been established and verified for its organic credentials by the Soil Association and Fair Trade Foundation. It started in Japan with a flagship store in Tokyo. It is now expanding into Europe, sourcing merchandise from 15 developing countries. While it used to supply mostly fair trade shops in the UK, it has now broken into the major retailers through Topshop, which hosts its fashion line, and through Timberland. But eco-fashion is not fast, say People Tree. It takes time to turn around new garments. I don't think green production can happen overnight. Um, we've got, there's a lot of interest, clearly, from consumers. Um, buyers are now uh, anxious to find organic cotton. What they need to do is they need to take a, a long-term view. They need to build solid partnerships with, with farmers' organisations so that farmers themselves can move from conventional cotton growing to organic cotton growing, which takes sometimes as much as three years. Um, you know, we need to start looking at, at long-term partnership. And fashion is the worst for being short-term. Um, we want everything, we want it you know, in two weeks' time, we want it in three weeks' time, maximum we have to, to fly it in. We, we, we really don't look at the environmental impact or the social impact of, of, of the fashion that we consume. So what we're looking at is a model of fashion that will have to be slower um, and will therefore um, take into consideration um, the environmental limitations of our planet. Not all clothing must have the latest look. Everyday wear like t-shirts can depend on long-term orders, thereby developing trading relationships. Marks & Spencer, the British retailer with 450 stores in 30 countries, claims 10% of all its cotton products are now ethically sourced. It says it uses one-third of all organic cotton worldwide. Working with the farmers in Gujarat for the last few years, M&S have just made their first major order for organic cotton from AgroCell, which is a third of its annual production capacity. We're aware that the rest of our cotton also needs um, work, so we've actually got a commitment to our um, cotton strategy, which is part of our plan A. That's growing the amount of fair trade cotton, the amount of organic cotton that we sell, but also we've been working with the WWF to look at how can we improve the conventional cotton industry. So those cotton farmers that can't or don't want to become fair trade organic, giving them standards and ways to improve the way they use water, pesticides, the way they manage their labour standards. So our commitment on cotton is across our whole business, every single bit of cotton in the future that you buy from M&S will in some way have better environmental and social standards. But we do believe that at that, that, that sort of um, the, the most ethical end, the fair trade and organic, that's where our customers want us to grow our business. We see this has been building over the last few years. There's been a real buzz around eco-fashion this year and we believe that's here to stay because once customers know about it, there's no going back. You know, you, you just want more and more. The farmers in India say other big retailers such as Next and CNA are approaching them for organic cotton. 
While some of the major fashion retailers, such as Monsoon, are expanding their organic range and sponsoring ethical fashion shows in London. So, clothing production may be about to get greener. But what about old clothes? What happens to them? Find out after the break. The ethical fashion show in Paris has expanded year by year. As fair trade and ecological clothing booms in popularity, both in fashion boutiques and increasingly in shopping centers. Organic cotton is one way the clothing industry can become more eco-friendly, but it's not the only way. Another is recycling. Many of these designs are made from recycled cloth, or in this case, fur. The throwaway has become must-have. This wedding dress is made completely of white plastic bags ironed together. It's an extreme way of showing that waste is just another resource. Accessories at the show included handbags and purses made out of a range of recycled material, like old fruit juice cartons, sweet wrappers and canvas from disused street advertising banners. One organisation, Bottle Top, a charity raising awareness about AIDS, takes recycled designs from Africa and Brazil and introduces them to fashion boutiques in the developed world. These bags are literally made from bottle tops and are being snapped up by fashionable youngsters wanting to be seen to be green. We have been collecting these bottle tops from restaurants and shops. It's a very hard work to collect these things. And then we buy wire to connect them to make our baskets. I would say recycled is the new black because it's a statement of consciousness. You know, today's environment, we're always being fed messages about, you know, just the fragility of, of, of the environment we're living in and actually how, you know, on a personal level, be it just putting your plastic cartons out or your, or your glass, you know, bottles every week to be recycled, you can make a difference and you should make it, be making a difference in a personal way. If you can have the new it bag of the season and it's something which has been recycled from, you know, old ring pulls from cans, which shows that actually you've, you're, you've got your head screwed on in terms of what's happening in, in the world today, then I would say then it's double black, really. Nice, but niche products for specialised boutiques. Could this ever be done on a massive scale? Certainly our ambition with it is to really set up production in a way that it can be ingrained and at the moment there are, you know, there's interest from, from other markets, you know, from France and from Germany and from Canada. So at the moment we'll really set out to, to exploit the opportunity with this bag. The world can't afford for recycling products to be a fad. It feels really exciting to be part of the vanguard of organisations that are really setting out to make it so that it's not just a fad. In the UK alone, two million tonnes of new shoes and clothing is bought every year. And according to the British government, about the same amount is thrown away. It's the fastest growing source of waste in British households. It's either destroyed in huge incinerators causing pollution or buried in landfill sites. Textiles present a particular problem for landfill because the synthetic man-made fibres don't decompose. One company pioneering industrial-scale recycling is Patagonia. In the early 90s, the California-based company took discarded plastic soda bottles, melted them down and turned them into new, high-quality fleeces for snow skiing. And the process is called PCR, it's post-consumer recycling. But effectively, you take plastic bottles, you melt those down and you get new, you get make granules um, which are then melted down again into and respun into filament yarn. So it's actually you're producing recycled polyester yarn, and from that stage on, you can start to spin it and make make new fleece. It takes about 25 to 30 large two-litre bottles to make um, an average fleece, and so far we've used or diverted 92 million 
bottles from going effectively to landfill or being incinerated. A fleece made from old bottles can be recycled indefinitely and any brand of fleece will do. Patagonia is now expanding its scheme with a new programme called Common Threads. Here, shops not only sell new clothes, they receive old clothes as well in their recycling bins. Yes, that's 100% recycled, that one actually. I don't know whether, you've, uh, whether you'd like to try it on. The reaction to the recycle bin has actually been very positive, but quite surprised. And I would say in terms of how much product we're bringing in, it's, again, it's, it's building up um, year on year. So we've had this here now uh, an entire season and uh, we've managed to fill one, one and a half boxes now. So it's a matter of people remembering to bring their, their clothing in, but people are very positive about it and I say quite surprised that uh, such a thing is actually available. But will consumers choose their clothing here based on price or on green credentials? A lot of this product is, is premium, therefore the price tag reflects that. But There's an enormous amount of features, the, the build quality is second to none, they will, the stuff lasts and lasts and lasts. So um, yes, to have the extra story of it being made of recycled material and being recyclable itself is, is a real plus. So people, some people are prepared to pay for that, but, but we would have to agree that yeah, for the bulk of the market and consumers to want to actually really take this by the, you know, the bull by the horns and, and say yeah, we, we demand a greater you know, proportion of recycled product, etc., then prices do have to drop in, a, across the board in certain, certain brands, yeah. The clothes from Patagonia's recycling bins are shipped here to a reprocessing plant in Japan. The old fleeces are melted down into pellets from which the new polyester yarn is woven into new clothes and other products. Polyester is derived from oil and makes up nearly half of all textiles in the world. So recycling polyester means there is less demand on petroleum, thereby reducing carbon dioxide emissions and energy consumption. Patagonia's long-term goal for recycling is to be completely responsible for all the products we make and for all of them to be using recycled products or organic natural fibres. In fact, our, our owner, Revanche Chouinard, wants by 2010 all our garments to be using some kind of environmentally fi friendly fibre, for it to be recycled, recycled polyester, for example, and we want it to be recyclable as well. In terms of the scientific and chemical side of it, it's, that's the biggest challenge, is trying to make sure everything can actually be recyclable as well, so we can close that loop and people can bring products back and be recycled. And we are now influencing a lot of other companies. We've got companies like Marks and Spencer, like Walmart, who are using and starting to use recycled polyester. And we've gone through the growing pains of trying to find out how do you do it? Who will do it? We're trying to find manufacturers who will use um, recycled polyester so that's one of the things which we're probably most proud of is really influencing other companies to think about their environmental impact and, and do something about it. Marks and Spencer's autumn range of fleeces, trousers and other products prominently display their recycled credentials. All parts say the company of its commitment to ensure that key raw materials come from the most sustainable sources available. Recycling clothing is really, really important and we've actually put a huge amount of recycled fleece onto our um, shelf this year for the first time. Um, it's about 360,000 items which equates to about 5 million um, 2 litre plastic bottles. So um, that was a trial, it's worked really well. We've now got it in fleeces, slippers, blankets, kids' trousers for school, um, all sorts of things. And we're planning to do about 19 million bottles worth of um, recycled polyester next year. So it's really building and that's really important to make that um, industry for the recycled um, materials. It may be retailers are becoming more eco-friendly but are there standards the consumer can use to make an informed choice? What are the standards? For People Tree, retailers are responding to consumers demand for eco-friendly clothing but how do consumers know what they are buying? 
the consumers are beginning to become more savvy about what organic cotton is, what fair trade cotton is. Um, but you know, clearly, what, what we'd like to see is these ideas mainstreamed. Uh, that the, the business on, on the British High Street adopts the practice of fair trade. Um, but, but clearly, you know, we need to have legislation for organic cotton. Um, it's not enough for it only to be fair trade. It needs to be organic. Um, we need that the manufacturer also is, is fair trade throughout the process. For the whole world's clothing industry to be sustainable, rather than a small part being eco-chic, there is still a long way to go. To satisfy the soaring demand for organic cotton, there would need to be a seismic shift of thousands of farmers towards more environmentally friendly methods. For the Gujarat region of India, the prospect of prosperity through a booming organic cotton trade is a major boost to the rural communities. And for Kima and his family, green fashion could ensure a brighter future. More and more development is needed. If more and more people buy the organic cotton, then more farmers will get the benefit. To find out more or comment, visit tv.org slash earthreport. Next week, Earth Report reveals the plight of the humble bee.